Welcome back uh, to Pastor Joe and the men's song, our teaching this morning. And we talked just a little bit about, uh, Pastor Joe had a question about ethics. We talked a little about uh, just uh, covered up what it meant and stuff. So here we are, we're talking about the battle of sin that would dwells within us. Okay. And this is what we left with Paul says, I do the things I don't like to do, it's not I that do them. And, I, and it's, uh, what am I to do? I agree that the law is spiritual, but I am no longer. He says, but sin dwells within me. And let's look at verse 18. It says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Nothing good dwells for to the will is uh, present with me. But how to perform what is good? I do not find, he says, for the good that I want I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not do that I practice. So, so once again, he's talking about the sinful nature, the struggle. I have a question. Yes. Um, yeah, go get that too. Okay. Um, so when we're talking about seven fourteen Romans, uh. Yeah, it's like a struggle to understand. So it could be ignorance when it comes to sin, but in this case, it's not ignorance. No, it's not ignorance. So then it's good intentions, but we can't follow through. I follow through. He's talking about the inner struggle that everybody has. He's talking about, I want to do what's right. I know what to do what's right, but I just can't get myself to do that. Okay? So he concludes with one thing that he's the die to his flesh. You know, you have to do something that you don't like to do, but then you end up doing it, and at the end you kind of see it. Okay, this is all this is all that it was. It's like, okay, how do we how do we get rid of stubbornness? Okay? Stubborn in sin will lead you to death. But you can be stubborn in the Lord. And develop, develop righteousness. Yeah. Stubborn in the Lord is more like determination. I'm determined to follow what God had laid out for me. I'm determined to follow exactly what the Word of God says. Because, you know, if you look at what Paul is dealing with, he's dealing with our flesh. And nothing good dwells in that flesh. Okay, we can get go from happy to mad and instantly. Okay, we can go, I know this is what he says, but evil, I, I don't want to do, but I practice it. Okay, nowadays, it's, it's, in, it's on your phones. Okay, I remember a young man coming to me, and uh, he had to work, he's had a job and everything, and then he goes to his job, and he's a truck driver, and... and and, uh, you know, we had a discussion. You know, I need a phone. I need to do this. I need to do that. Okay, well, do what's right with the phone. But he had a struggle with porn. Now, I'm dumbfounded when it comes to this kind of stuff on the phones. I don't get into all the stuff that everybody else knows. But somehow, some way, he, he struggled. And he, his demeanor started to change. And all of a sudden, at night, he's on his phone, and then other things start to, but his demeanor, his, his way, his, I can't pray in the morning. I, I struggle with, well, what's going on with you? He comes and brings me his phone, he plays right there, he goes, man, I, I can't do it here. I, have, I can't, I can't. Well, what's wrong? I'm looking at porn. He goes, I can't help it because if I look at that, then I want to defile myself. So you got the battle of inner struggle. It's right in front of you. Okay? We made a way that we cannot live our lives without our phones. You see, whatever we try to make, use it for good, inside of here becomes the struggle of the old human nature. That old human nature, that whole sinful nature is, 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 is what Paul is dealing with. And every, 
disciple will come to that point in his life. Every disciple comes through the struggle. I know what I need to do. I don't like the things that I do. The things that I want to do, I can't do. And the things that I shouldn't do, I do. And we know that nature of sin is still in there. And it's, 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 it's boiling up and it's, and it's with us. And, you know, I, and now you have it right in front of you. Well, nobody will know. I can do it in secret. But there's one thing that the spiritual has over us. It's called conviction. And when you know something is wrong and you try to bury it, okay, and you try to put it to rest, it comes alive. Okay. And these are the areas of what it means to be a disciple. Believe it or not, this is why a lot of men leave. To follow their flesh. This is what Paul says. I mean, he gets down to it. Amen. I don't like the things that I do. But the good I will to do, I do not do them. But the evil that I do, I mean, there it is. I practice. For I know I do what I uh, not want to do. He says, it is no longer I who do them, but that sin that dwells in me. He's still, this is what he's talking about. He's not letting it be a captive of his life, but he knows that there is a struggle. You have the will of God for your life. We can turn and pray and ask the Lord all day long. This is what he says in verse 21. I find then that the law that, he says, I find then the law that evil is present with me and the one who dwells to do good for I delight in the law. And the court, it says, the laws of God according to the inward man. Think about what he's saying. The inward man. What's inside of you? Come on. Here, here is, you got Elisha, and you got Elisha. Okay? And then you got, here he says, the prophets is going to go into, he goes in there and it's, he knows, Elijah knows, this is the time. God's going to take me. And before I depart, I must impart to this man. And for the next how many years, he's going to learn everything from me. And this is a scary place for a man of God because he knows if you got disciples, you got to be on your toes. Okay? There's things that you can do and you can't do can't do what the congregation does. Don't want to do that. It's okay for them to do that. I never understood this stuff. Okay? But as I grew in the Lord, I realized, amen, temptations and all these things will always be there. And so you have to say, okay, well, I can't do because God has sanctified me and now I'm preaching his word. Now I'm not just preaching his word. I'm teaching his word. I'm living his word. Mm -hmm. And I, but the inner struggle that I have of my flesh. You know, there's times I want to buy a steak and I can't have a steak because I can't afford it. Okay? I can't afford a steak, so what do I get? I'll send it for ground beef. But my flesh wants a steak. Shall I go steal it? You understand the inner struggle. I don't have to have I don't have to have ground beef. I can have me a steak. But in my inner struggle, so I give it to my flesh and says, "Hey, you know what? Just take it. Nobody will know." You're a pastor. Why should, why would they even think that? Are oh, you hearing me now? Mm -hmm. Talk about the inner struggle. That never happened. I'm just using that example. Okay. I'm just saying that how we struggle with certain things. Paul's laying it all out. And he says, you know, I find then the law. It says, the law. Then a law that is evil present in me. And the one who, who wills to do good, he says, and then I delight in, the, uh, I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. He says, but and then I seen another law. In my members, 
warring against the law of my mind. There we go. First it's here, now it's where? Oh my gosh. Okay? And every disciple will go through this. You know, you could be angry. Something can go wrong with you. You're sitting there going, man, this is not even worth it. What do I do, Lord? I law, he says, the, the warning against the, the law of my mind, bearing into, bringing in, me into captivity of the law of sin. Okay, here you got the Torah of God, now you got the laws of sin. What are the laws of sin? You only know there are laws of sin. Okay. You know what the Bible says in, in, in Proverbs chapter 6? About the laws of sin, what God hates. Sin is something that God dislikes. The laws of sin have to do with Satan's world. You go to Proverbs chapter 6, turn there. Amen. And you will find the things that God hates. And the things that God hates, amen, is contrary to the things that we love. You know, when, when, when the Lord tells you and I, was it 6 what? I can't remember. 616. 6.16? The 16 that the Lord hates. Listen to what he says. Yes, and seven are an abomination to him. Abomination is like the most ugliest thing. I mean, it's the most worst type of thing. Abomination. Like what he thinks about homosexuality. God thinks about homosexuality is a uh, abomination to him. It's an abomination to him. And to us, it's more like, you know what, it's accepted even in the church today. Well, this is accepted. It's a part of life. If a man wants to turn to a woman, let's accept it. He's never, hey, come on. He likes putting makeup on. Well, in our day and age, everybody puts makeup on, I guess. Well, let's look what he says. God says, and this is the thing he says, six things God hates and, and abomination to him. A proud look. Okay. How many know what a proud look is? When we think we're better than others. Ah, uh, it's like. Attitude. Come on. You're a haughty. Right? Yeah. That's what it is. Who are you to tell me? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a proud look. A lying tongue. You did it. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was somebody else that did it. <laughs> Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that is uh, devised uh, wicked plans, all right? Feet are sw uh, that are swift to run to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren, one who causes problems between the brethren, one who likes to be the little, come on, you can go ahead, don't let him talk to you like that, go over there, go there, go there, go there. Those are the six things that God hates. So, so those are what Paul says. Get back to chapter 7. If you want to put a mark there, you can. These are the things that Paul says, amen, is that, you know what? A warning against the laws of my mind it says, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. So now we understand the laws of sin. The laws of sin that are in his mind. This is the struggle if you surround yourself with sinners, sinners will try to entice you. Your sinners are going to continue to try to disrupt what God is doing in your life. When you're around godly men of God and mature men of God, there's nothing but good on that side. A lot of correction. You might even put your foot in your mouth a few times. Say the wrong thing. I remember being around many men of God before me and just listening. Not even trying to put my input. You know, not I'll, I'm not going to try to argue with the man of God because I already know I'm wrong. When you argue with the man of God, what are you trying to do? 
prove a point. Prove a point. Come on. Come on. You guys do this all the time. Come on. Justify. Justify. Come on. Come on. Prove them wrong. Defend. Come on. Prove them wrong. Defend yourself. Defend yourself. Come on. It's true. Prove what you're saying. It's more like, no. It's more like you're trying to, look at, man, all this is on me right now. The spotlight's on me. He's making me feel it. I'm starting to sweat. Let me blame it on somebody else. Let me get this off me. The intentions are still good, though, sir. Well, a lot of people in hell have good intentions. <laughs> but the point is, is that we're arguing a point that you're going to lose anyways. The student is not above the teacher. There you go. Amen. All right? And this is, the, this is what Paul says. I'm bringing it to captivity to the laws of sin. No matter what we do in our lives as young disciples, we make mistakes and use those mistakes as stepping stones not to do again. Right. But if you keep going back to those things, then pride takes over. What does God did not like? Proud look. Proud look. Okay. And so those are areas of your life that you must learn how to overcome. Now, there are some, as I said, men of God, they're called men of God, who still dabble in drugs. Believe it or not. They go over a pulpit, amen, I don't know how they do it, but they're popping pills, they're not, maybe not shooting heroin no more, but they're doing some kind of thing. Pharmacia. And you can see it in their eyes, like, oh, I'm in their spirit. Yeah, you're in the spirit of something. <laughs> when you know the testimony of others, and that you know to know, it's like people will know me. I don't care any person from LA or whatever. They say, no, that guy's no good. Don't expect, hey, man, oh, yeah, he's going to go back to his body. No, it's, people don't like me over there. And if they like me, they love to hate me. So, so nothing good comes out of there. What we think in the world is respect from others, actually, it's more fear. Because of the thing of the past life that you did. I don't care, fear. I mean, someone sees you coming along, well, what do you want? What are you, what, are you, what are you doing here? Get out of here. I don't want you around me. You know, if you can go visit your children or whatever, your, by your ex or whatever the case may be, you try to go in your, the parameters of your area and people panic. They're like, what is he doing here? What's going on here? Why is he back? Get him out of here. Come on, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was laughing. <laughs> yeah, because you go back and they think you're going to steal something. <laughs> try to calm them, try to hustle them, try to do something. So uh, there's always that type. People say they're not afraid, but they are afraid. <laughs> and it's not about your about who you were. You know, I often tell them, I'm not that, that person anymore. They see me smiling, and they, why are you smiling all the time? Because I'm, first of all, happy to see you, but I got Jesus. I want to give you something. Amen. Okay? Amen. So why do men today, disciple, if you're being a disciple, walk around so discouraged, so long-faced, so uptight with themselves? Why is it before you even walk outside, it's a bad day? Come on, give me some input. Not sure. Not sure about what? Where your walk is, how far along you are in your walk. No, it's not just that. Sometimes it's your inner struggles. Uh, the inner struggles? That's what Paul's talking about. Refusing to let go of things in the past. Okay, there you go. Some of the things in the past. Lack of uh, personal prayer, personal study, praying to God to help you. Okay, let's say the, these are things that you should do and you struggle to do them. You know, when I was a young man, a disciple, uh, I struggled to read. I could ask any one of you to get up and read. Can you do it like that? No, no problem. This is how I used to read. And you still, you still, you still, still see me struggle. No? Yeah. I used to read like this. There. There is. Therefore. For there. There. there therefore. Now, no condemnation, con, condemnation. <laughs> it's 
sounds funny, but that's how I used to read. Or I would look at something and I would say, no, okay, turn your Bibles into uh, uh, Romans chapter 34, verse 8. Do I still not do that? My brain doesn't work like that. And so I have come to understand that I must work twice as hard as anybody else, if not three times. Found different ways how to connect my life to God's. You see, and, and, and getting back to the struggle of your, the battle of your mind. This is the battle of your mind. I can never be. So why is it we walk out the door already defeated and discouraged? Come on, give me some more. As I look at some of you guys, man, I can see it through you. You're, like, you're frustrated. I was frustrated too. I want things now. Now, I wasn't in the day that you guys are in the cell phones, this, this, and that. Our cell phones were that big. It looked like a block. <laughs> okay? So, I was in the time of everything was steel. We didn't have microwaves like you guys have today. We had them. We just didn't have them in our program. Okay? There's a lot of things that we did not have, okay, and we struggled with. We struggle every morning. We get up every morning, and every morning is a day like this. Dragging your feet. So what is it? Uh, because if we're in the place where Paul says this, look at this, okay. Remember, you are a disciple. He says, I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. He says, bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, is which is my members, this is, which is my members. And he, could, he says this before he concludes, he says, oh, what a wretched man that I am. I mean, maybe that's one of the things that, that, that you struggle with. That you can't, that you're always defeated before you walk out the door. I remember a young man who turned around and tell me, man, you look, you're always happy. I'm not always happy. I, when I was a young disciple, I was like, just like joyous. I had no reason to be joyous. There were times when, you know, the man of God would say, what are you so happy about? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Been at home, we wake up. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? I wasn't even director or nothing. But when I came director, oh. <laughs> okay. But there's some of you who have should have the joy of life. And 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 you know when something good comes your way, you question it. Yeah. What, what what's going on here? What's 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 this all about? Why are, you, why are you being so kind to me? Why are you being good to me? <laughs> Instead of rejoicing and being excited, you're questioning it. And then you're like, this, well, I don't know. Maybe we made a mistake. You keep us on our toes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you say is because we're, we're, we got so used to failure that, that we're just it becomes a normal thing that now we don't even try anymore. You don't try to achieve forward because you're so used to failing. Or you're well, failure. yes, but, but you're not a failure. You never heard me say that. I think they say that you're a failure. They say you need to work on these things. Because it takes work. I found out one thing. Remember back in the day, I mean, I you know, before I was I started dealing drugs when life became easier for me <laughs> as a drug addict. Okay. Usually drugs came to me. I didn't go looking for them. Alright. But there were dark times. <laughs> Dimes. <laughs> there were times that I would go out and look for dope. Okay? And, and and we've all been, I don't know if you guys have been there, but I, I'm going to just say for me. And, it, and and when you didn't have no money, you, you had to go hustle. And that hustle just about do almost, almost, almost anything to get my dope. All right? <laughs> and use whatever craft I had. Like I was a cable guy, so I'd go hustle cable. 
who would not want to be hooked up to cable for only forty dollars? Come on, mm-hmm. where it costs a hundred bucks, I could do it right now. <laughs> There's not a person in the world that ever turned me down. Okay, sometimes I hustle more. But you spend more of your day trying to hustle up all those wrong things to do, stealing and doing all this other stuff, than going to a job and work. And the only difference is you go to a job, you don't get paid at the end of the day. At least in California, that's not the way it works. And you have to wait till you get paid at the end of the week. And you're struggling inside of you because that drug's getting the best of you. Okay? So you have to do something, but you spend more time doing the wrong thing, and that's what we're used to. That's where failure comes in. That's what Paul's talking about. You know, I have another law in my mind that's bringing me into captivity, that's making me discouraged, that's making me depressed. There's no reason why any of you should be depressed. I mean, I know you have your reasons, but like I said before, instead of being appreciated about it, you know, you have to, like right now, everybody's at home depressed. Okay? Christians. What should they be doing? Praying. Praying. Reading. Reading. Hey, brother, how you doing, sister? Or sister? Follow up. Nowadays, texting, how you doing? Reaching out. Don't you think that should be a good thing that should be going on? Mm-hmm. I've been telling my wife, my wife, what should I do? I said, follow up with everybody. Subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe. Get on the net. Right? This is why we're doing this. Amen. We're doing this trying to reach out to you. Yeah. All right? Through teaching. Try to make a bad outcome into something that's good. Because God, this is what God does. This is God's, what is God says. Huh? I work all things together for the good. Mm-hmm. All those bad things, let's turn them into good things. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So the purposes of putting all this together is that we teach what is good and the good and the good of the Lord. But what do we got? Walk out the door, you're already defeated. Wake up in the morning, oh, I gotta look at you again. <laughs> you know, I mean, we pray, like I prayed for a woman, prayed for my wife, long time. Okay? I don't know, about, you know, I know she prayed, and you know, it took me a time to get together with her. Okay, I had to go through all the channels. And it, was, it the process was tough, but we're talking about relationships. Okay? And then it should be like I was the most happiest guy in the world. She was more kind of always worried about what people thought right away. Me, I didn't care. I'm going to tell everybody. I was joyous. People would look at me. Even my leaders would say, you know, you got to keep this on the down low because you don't know where it's going. Oh, I know where it's going. (laughs) I know where this is going. All right? So stay out of my way. That's what my real thoughts were. Okay? But the struggle. And I believe this with all my heart that this that Satan knew the possibilities of your destiny and to disrupt that. Like right now, you you guys sit here and maybe some out there are struggling, like Paul says, okay, as a disciple in a church somewhere where things are not working out for you, and you have given up in your prayer life. And you've given up on God and you find it to a place where I don't want to study no more. I don't want to. And you're losing out. And, and there's roadblock after roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. No, that's, believe it or not, that is a part of the process. So when we read the scriptures in, in, in James chapter 1, what does he say? Count it all joy when we go through what? Trials. Trials and testings. What is it for? To, it's to build what? Testimony. <laughs> and persevere. And he goes on. Persevere brings what? Patience. But are we rejoicing? Huh? No. What do we do? Hey, dragging your feet. 
Defeat it before you even get into the car. Huh? Remember when you stopped? 